Start recording. All right, welcome everybody to Diamond Zone. Good morning, good morning. Happy, what are we, Thursday? Thursday, yes, yes, yes. It's a thankful Thursday, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that one. But, um, uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, great stuff going on within the group. You know, you can hear some of the people that, um, you know, people now taking responsibilities for them, their, themselves and their teams, people doing their own three-way calls. I can tell you that there's a lot of people taking advantage of the three-way calls. We're, we're literally on calls all, all day long. And uh, it's showing in the volume, guys. It's, it's, um, it, it really is. But here's what I love about the three-way call. You know, it's really about teaching others. So it's not that we're the end-all answer. It's, it's for you to get on, to listen differently, so you can then do your own three-way calls and start duplicating. And, um, you know, as Jeremy said yesterday, what a great, what a great training that he did. You know, it, it's, it's really all about matching the opportunity to the people you're talking to. And, uh, and that starts with listening. And I think, you know, we beat that horse up, but, you know, there's really not much new when it comes to um, personal development. It really is about doing the same thing and over and over and over again. And what everybody has to do is they have to find their lane. They have to find what they're good at. And that starts with, right, understanding really the system. And the system that we have is very simple. Okay, as we know, we send out a two-minute video, right? And then we wait for people to respond to that, to, to, to that, to that um, two-minute video because all we're doing when we send that out is really fishing. And then when someone bites, now you're asking for help to help you reel that person in, right? To either make a decision to do this, right? Or say no, because the worst thing that could happen to anybody Okay, it's not the yes or no. The worst thing that can happen for most people is no decision. The I want to think about it makes all of us absolutely insane. Tell me if I'm not right. You could deal with the yes, you could deal with the no. But when you got these people in a, the abyss, right, that never have the ability to make a decision, so I, my job is to help them make that decision. Okay, and it's okay, and I let people know. I give them permission to say no, but I want them to make sure they know what they're saying no to. And this is where that globe comes in that we keep showing you over and over again. Think about that. People will be saying no to something on that slide. Now, who doesn't want something on that slide? So are they really saying no to what's on that slide or to what we offer? Or are they saying no to themselves? And this is where you have to understand if someone does say no, because my job during these calls, I'm not worried about the prospects. Okay, the prospects will come if I keep you in the game. My whole thing is, and your whole thing needs to be to keep your people that have made the decision in the game. It's sort of like, it's sort of like the person that is waiting and pacing back and forth, waiting for their guest to show up at a meeting. You ever have those people? You're probably one of those people, right? You've got 15 people that are already there waiting and sitting in the, in the meeting room, but you're waiting for the one person that didn't show up. But you've got 15 people that are in there saying, I want to do this. Well, it, it's the same thing as how I look at this business. Listen, the prospects will come if you keep the initial people that made their decision in the game. That's why we do Diamond Zone. I want to make sure you guys know, and you got to find your little successes. A no is not a no to you. A no is a no to their situation. And what you just have to do is you got to release that, right? And you got to keep moving forward because that's who I want to protect. That's why even when I do one of those webinars at one and nine, okay, yes, I know there's guests there, but I want everybody to get something out of that call. I want to keep you moving forward because you're the one that made the decision, right? And if I keep you in the game and I get you to exercise your attributes, you're going to be a great trainer and you're going to be able to walk other people through 
the same thing you walk through. People say, wow, you and Lisa, right? You guys have done so well in the industry. Yeah, we've done well in the industry, but you know why? It's because we've been beat to you know what? It starts with an S and ends with a T, okay? That's why we were good, because we've went through the good times and the bad times. So we could identify when other people are in the wrong place. And that's where we talk very transparent to people. Here's where we were, here's why we made our decision, and here's been our journey. You want what we have, do what we did. But are you willing to go through, right, all the different obstacles that will come our way? Well, see, most people, the people that tell you no, they're not even willing to go through the minor obstacle of making a decision. Well, what do we have to do? What we have to do is we got to exercise our attributes. And the first attribute we have to exercise is our desire. Right, you guys got to understand something. Desire is in the heart for a reason. Right, it's our biggest attribute. Okay, when you look at your desire, this fuels everything else. The desire to do what? Whatever it takes. So you got to have this desire, this unbelievable desire, and you have to know everybody has that within them. But it's been extinguished. Right? Think about it. When you were a little boy or a little girl, every day you woke up, you were going to be something different. Right? There was no limitations. What was that? You were exercising your desire. And as we grow up, we start to put ourselves in a box and we start to extinguish this desire. Why? Because the situation that we've chosen never allows us to exercise it. Right? If I'm in the gym and I never exercise my legs, right? Then I have, right? I have, I, I'm big in the upper body, but I have no legs. And by the way, that's the truth. Okay? <laughs> I, I got a good upper body, but I hate legs. Well, that's just me. Well, see, if, 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 if I understood that, well, it's the same thing with your desire. It's the same exact thing. We got to exercise it. So we, we're that person that shows people, yes, there is another way. But here's my question when it comes to desire, and it cuts both ways. Are you serious about your business? Are you serious about your business? Well, yeah, Jeff, I'm on this call every day. Yeah, that's step one. But are you treating your business like a business? Or are you treating this like a hobby? Are you treating this like a little thing? Well, Jeff, this is not my primary business. I get it. I understand. And I'm not suggesting that you quit where your consistent money is coming from. But you could still have the mentality that this is a real business. And if the desire is strong enough, right, you will make the necessary changes. Because I will tell you, there will have to be sacrifice. Well, where does desire, where does desire come in? Okay, that, I should say that's where the desire comes in. Being willing to sacrifice what? Something's got to give, right? If you need a little bit of extra time to do what you need to do here, that comes from desire. Well, desire is fueled by what? Well, here we go again. Your why. Why are you doing this? Now, here's the other thing. If I sit down with somebody, people always ask, you know, if I'm prospecting, if I bring a new person in the business, this is one of the questions I ask people. I did a three-way call yesterday, and I had a person, and I asked him one question. I said, tell me a little bit about yourself. Have you ever been involved in network marketing? He went on for 15 minutes. Then I asked him where he lived. He went on for another 10 minutes. I asked him what he did, right, flop. He went on for another 10 minutes. I said, let me ask you a question. Why are we on this call today? What are you looking for? And he talked, and he talked, and he talked. And I then, after he did that, 
And that was about 35, 35, 36 minutes. Because I was timing this. Okay, I asked him a question. I go, are you serious? Are you serious? Because everything you've told me, you're looking to make a change. I said, on a scale from one to 10, how serious are you? He said, 10. That was my closing question. Okay, are you serious enough to make a change? And I ask everybody that question, and I'm asking everybody listening to me now, are you serious? From a, from, from, a, from, a, from a standpoint of one to 10, how serious are you about this? Now, you know what that is? That's your desire. Just look at your number that you just gave yourself. That's your desire. And based on that number, right, you're going to be willing to do whatever you're willing to do. Had another call yesterday, okay? Person was on the call, and he kept going back to the same thing. I said, are you serious? He says, yes, but, I go, wait a minute. How serious are you? He said, 10. I said, what's the but? He goes, I don't have the money. I'm broke. I said, well, if you're serious and your desire is a 10, okay, you'll be willing to figure it out. I didn't listen to his stuff. See, a lot of times we listen to everybody's stuff. I'll listen, but it doesn't stop me from giving the right direction. I said, are you really telling me that you're a 10 and you want to change everything about the course of your life, but you're going to let $1,500? I didn't say, I, see, once again, I didn't say partner pack. I didn't go automatic. I didn't listen to what he was telling me and go, oh my gosh, he's broke. He can only do a single pack. Why? Because that's not the right advice for him. Now, could he start there? If he said, Jeff, here's my only $300. I want to get in. Of course. But my job is to give him the right direction. I said, are you really telling me, okay, that $1,500 is going to stop you from achieving your financial goals? And then it's amazing. 10 minutes before that, he told me how he took a vacation a month ago. And I asked him the question. I go, how did you pay for the vacation, Mr. Broke person? He said, I put it on a credit card. Hmm. And I just listened. Call me today, right before this call. Okay, here's the call. Jeff. I don't know how to get on this loyalty program. I go, what are you doing? He goes, I'm signing up. He goes, I figured it out. And so, because he couldn't see where the loyalty was. Okay, I said, you got to sign up. You go back in and you do your loyalty. He goes, okay, thanks for the conversation and thanks for the direction. I am serious. What did I do? I just gave direction. Because I believe in my opportunity. But you, everybody here, guys, I'm just using that as an example. But if we bring this back to us, are you willing to sacrifice whatever you have to sacrifice? Well, that goes back to your desire, right? If your desire is a 10, you'll be willing to do whatever you have to do. And one of the things I always tell people is, and you're going to have to embrace this, because this is what's kept us in the game for 24 years. You ready? Figure it out. That's what kept us in the game. We've always put our head together against all obstacles. Okay, and we figured it out. How? Why? To keep moving forward. Because sometimes things are just thrown your way that will buckle the mightiest of men. But you know what? Our desire is such, you know, you know, if you was my desire, the thought of going back and getting another job. That makes me crazy. That makes me absolutely nuts. Once you get a taste of not working for somebody else and being told what to do and when to do it, man, that's what fuels me. Now, I don't know what your desire would be, but that's what fueled me. Because I didn't know what it felt like to be in control. 
Because I thought I was in control, but are we really ever in control? If I work for somebody else, no. But see, it's willing to do whatever it takes. Being willing to sit down and walk people through what they need to hear. Not willing just to listen to all the objections and then understand. No, I'll understand the way you feel. You know my favorite line, right? I do understand the way you feel. I said that to the person. I understand that you're broke, but you just told me you're serious. And you told me you were a 10. So now we gotta be willing to figure it out. So it's not like I just said, okay, got it, gotta go, you're broke. No, everybody's gonna say they're broke. Everybody's gonna say they have no time. Everybody's gonna, gonna say they're uncomfortable with multi-level. If I listen to everybody's stuff, right, we would never grow a business. But I understand where that stuff is coming from. You know where it's coming from? Lack of desire. So when I do a three-way call, I'm trying to fan that desire. I'm trying to get them to see something they can't by offering all the different things this opportunity can give somebody. That's what I do. So you gotta be willing to do whatever it takes. Now here's the other thing, guys. Are you also willing not to prejudge? Okay, let me, let me, let me, somebody has me. Hang on. There. Now you're all muted. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, now. Let me ask everybody here a question. Are you prejudiced? Everybody answer to them. Are you prejudiced? Now, I, 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 I um, got up this morning. I got my, I, I Googled prejudice. Prejudice, unfavorable opinion or feeling, feeling formed beforehand without knowledge, thought, or reason. Prejudice, unfavorable opinion or feeling formed beforehand without knowledge, thought, or reason. So let me ask you a question. Are you prejudiced? Now, let me tell you what we're doing exactly. Are you willing not to be prejudiced? Are you willing not to prejudge? Someone just wrote that on the chat. This is what we're talking about here. Prejudice is an assumption, okay? It's prejudging, assuming, okay, that people would not be interested. Assuming, okay, that people have too much money. Assuming they don't have the time. Assuming they don't have the money. See, we assume all these different things because we prejudged. We prejudge. Well, that's the definition of prejudice. Unfavorable opinion or feeling, right, formed before, beforehand without knowledge. Well, how do you get the knowledge? Right. Assume, right? You know the assume thing. Make an ass out of you and me. It's amazing. But, you know, you've you got to understand why we do this. If we've already judged that someone wasn't interested or was not going to be interested. We don't have to take the necessary steps to reach out to them. So it's an excuse not to do something, right? If I've had my list, I go, Mark, oh, Mark would never do it. It saves me the call. It saves me the text. I've already determined Mark's not going to do it. So at the end of the day, right, you've determined no one's going to do it. And you said, well, this is not working. Wait a minute. Listen, the one thing that will kill you, you got to be willing to go through every person on your list. You're just going through the numbers. Who cares? Do you really care what people think? Okay. I don't. I know I have a mission. And my job is to be willing to go out there and not prejudge or make assumptions. 
because this is what keeps people paralyzed, guys. I'm telling you. So be willing to what? Do three-way calls. Be willing to make your list. Be willing to attend the company events. Be willing to what? Be that professional master inviter that Jeremy talked about, right? Be willing to sit down with your people and schedule their what? Their private launch webinar. Be willing to commit to a good reading and listening library. Okay, but what's that fueled by? Well, without the desire, you're not willing to do much. And then the next attribute, okay, is, is one that a lot of us have to really work on, and that's what? Being teachable. Okay, being dumb enough to be smart enough to listen. And now here's where this comes in. This, this is somewhat blind faith, I got to tell you. Okay, in the beginning. So here's, here, here's what you have to understand. Whoever your upline is, is motivated for you to do business, right? So let's take me and Lisa for an example, because we sit on top of pretty much everybody on this call, right? Now, would I want to give you any wrong advice? That would be kind of a dumb business plan. Let's bring people in and tell them all the things that we know is not going to work. But it's amazing how some people get involved, right? And they question some of the things you're telling them. And so I don't get frustrated. I let them know, and I have a three strike rule. I'll go to bat. I'll work day and night for everybody. This is my mentality. This has got to be your mentality. I'll work day and night for the people that are willing to take the direction. Because why would I wanna keep fighting with somebody that I know what they're fighting me on is not gonna work? That's crazy. See, the good news is I'm not your boss. The bad news is I'm not your boss. See, at Bally's, I could fire and hire. Someone said, I say, listen, here's what you need to do today. Here's your schedule. And when you're here, here's what I expect from you. And if they don't do it, I can write them up. And if I had three write-ups on somebody, because we had to protect ourselves as a company, I could fire them. Because I have documentation that they're not willing to do what I told them to do. Here, I can't write you up. I can't hire and fire, and you can't hire and fire your people. But you know what you can take away from them? Your time, your effort, your energy. Why would I want to keep doing that? That's crazy, right? Just keep button heads with somebody that's not willing to do it. No, I don't treat them any differently. I just move away from them, and I work with people that are open to listening to the information and doing. Now, I will tell you, this was very tough for me. See, Lisa, day one, was very teachable when she first got involved in network marketing. Someone told her what to do, she did it. The reason I struggled a lot in this industry is because I wasn't teachable. I didn't really find my desire. I wasn't willing. It took me two years to finally buy into the system. Two years. Thank God Lisa was teachable because her desire pulled me through my, my stuff. Without Lisa's desire, we would have never been in network marketing. That's the truth. Mute, what? Mine is fear of rejection. Okay, there you go. But where does that come from, Todd? Where does your fear of rejection come from? See, if the desire is big enough, like I said, let me tell you something about rejection. It's the best thing that can happen to you. I'm going to say that again. Rejection and no's are the best thing that can happen to you. 
See, if you make the worst thing the best thing, it's nothing to fear. What's rejection? It's a no, right? I get it. But, okay, but understand, a rejection or a no means you did the work. Does that make sense? So what did you learn from the rejection? What did you learn from the no? Here's what I learned when someone tells me no. It means I didn't want them anyway. <laughs> That's what it meant. That's how I kept my sanity. That's how I kept moving forward. Oh, you said no? Didn't want you anyway. I don't say that to them, but that keeps me sane. Because if I took every no personally, I'd be in a straight jacket in my bedroom. Right? Drooling from my mouth because this is crazy. Because you hear way more no's and you get way more reject rejection than you do, do than you get yeses. Watch this one. Even the people that say yes and do it and buy their helo don't take the journey. This business is full of rejection. Why do you think you got to have a huge desire? Because your desire has to cover a lot of people. Remember I said yesterday, you got to borrow my beliefs. What I'm saying to you is you got to borrow my desire. You got to borrow my willingness. And that will allow you to take the journey. So how big does my, how big does the leader's desire have to be? If everybody's borrowing it. See who motivates the motivator? The desire motivates the motivator. That's what it is. So I, first of all, appreciate Todd saying, I don't like rejection. Well, Todd, I just showed you how to now embrace rejection. That's how you do it. Rejection is good because you're taking the journey. But right now, you know what you're doing? You're sitting and go, I hate rejection. I hate rejection. I don't like no. So what do you do? You're probably paralyzed because you're afraid of the rejection. Well, now that you know rejection is probably going to come your way, what's to fear? Who cares? Give the guy a high five. Say, I'm happy you rejected me because that just illustrates to me that I got to keep going because I got to find the yes. But please keep us in mind. Let me help you with rejection here. Someone says no. Listen, I'm so excited that you told me no. But now that you know what I do, would you at least do this for me? See, now he's relaxed because you've accepted his no. You're not gonna try to overcome and close. Now that you know what I do, if you come across somebody that's looking to change their financial situation, that wants more time, that wants more money, now that you know what I do, will you lead them my way? Or this one. Do you know anybody else that's open? I know it's not for you. Now, now you've just turned to rejection because I've yet to have somebody say, oh yeah, I'll keep this in mind. Doesn't mean they're gonna do it. Doesn't mean they're gonna open up their contact base to you, but it left me with that person then saying yes. So it wasn't real rejection, right? See, you could play your own head games. Your fear of rejection is a head game. That's all it is. And you're, you're hanging on to that. Okay, but here's what you got to do. You got to check your desire. So that's what I'm talking about, being willing to be teachable and then being self-reliant. See where self-reliant is? It's in your shoulders. Run this business by taking responsibility and taking ownership of your business. In the beginning, you're borrowing our desire, right? But eventually you go, listen, I got this. This is my business. I'm gonna take responsibility. Now I'm gonna run my business like I don't have a good upline. Doesn't mean you ever, ever, ever talk bad about your upline. Never, ever. That's, that's a killer, by the way. Doesn't mean your upline's not there to support you, but you just finally made a decision 
that I'm going to take responsibility. I like the word ownership. Remember how I use the analogy all the time? If you bought a franchise, you took ownership because you put your financial skin in the game. You better take ownership. You got a half a million dollars in the game, dude. You got to make sure that works. Here, right, you're not taking ownership because of financial, your, your financial obligation. So now it's what? It's you taking responsibility for the people that you brought in, letting them borrow your desire. See, these are the attributes, the attributes of success. Okay, and then you gotta be driven. Drive and determination, look where that is. Is that not in the hips? Why? Because you gotta be willing to get up and do something. I could have all the desire in the world. I could be willing, teachable, take ownership. But if I'm not willing to put together the action steps, right, that's the another analogy I use. I could buy the health club membership, but if I never walk in the door, really makes no difference. I could even make the 36 payments of 50 bucks a month. I'm still not going to get in shape. I made all those 36 payments. How, how, how did I gain weight? Well, because you never walked in the door, right? You, you never exercised. So yeah, I have a huge desire, right? And that should fuel the willingness, right? But if you're not willing to go out there and put together your game plan, this is what we talked about yesterday. And this goes back to, are you serious? What's your game plan? The only game plan for all of us is to do what? Be that professional inviter. We got to get in front of people, guys. That's our business. This is what we keep saying for 18 months. That's got to be your focus. And yes, as you bring in people, right, you bring in people here, right, you're trying to identify that ones that want to exercise their attributes. Those are the ones that take it deep. But you, even, even once you get people to make a decision, it doesn't mean they ever even take it one level deep. In other words, they never sponsor somebody. And this is why we have Diamond Zone. I'm trying to fan everybody's desire here. So I could find someone who says, I got this. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to be self-reliant. I'm going to build my team. That's duplication, right? Well, see, how many people do you have to sponsor this way to find people that want to exercise their attributes? Here we go. That's why you never take your eye off the recruiting ball. And that's why you got to make the recruiting ball fun, Todd. And I'm just using you because you, you stepped up. But you'll never ever get into that recruiting mode or sponsor, forget recruiting, sponsoring mode. I like that word better. Recruit means next, sponsor means here. I'm here to support. But Todd will never get, get there if he's fearful of rejection. So I can see where he's stuck. And by him saying why he's stuck, he's taking the steps necessary to get unstuck. Because he's identified where he's at. I identified where I was. I was not teachable. Period. Don't tell me, I know, I get it. But that got me stuck. What, what, what has you stuck? Go back to your desire. Go back to your desire. Go back to your one or 10. And you'll find, and if you're honest with yourself, you allow yourself to move out of it. But you know what? As long as you hang on to that, the results you're getting are the results you're going to have. Now, drive and determination. Have your plan and be directed. The direction we will give you. Because, right, if you're, if you're at the mall and you're trying to get to Nordstrom's and it's a brand new mall, what do you go look for? That big map, right? And in that map, it says you are here. If you don't know where you are, 
you can't get to Nordstrom's unless you walk through the entire mall, right? But if I'm directed and I know where I'm at and I know where I want to go and I have somebody leading me down that path, I'm going to get there faster. That's what being directed is. Having a game plan. Now, the way you find out how fast you want to go, you got to get with the person that brought you in. You got to let us know your goals. How fast do you want to get to your, what you say you want to earn? So we, this goes back to the unrealistic expectation training, right? I want to get to 50,000 a month. Well, here's what has to happen to get you there. Well, I'm not willing to do that. I don't have that time. Then we got to what? Lower our expectations. Right? We got to get to 1,000 a month before we get to 50,000, right? And then we just duplicating everybody doing 1,000. You want to make 50,000? Help 50 people make 1,000. That's basically the comp plan. Or help 25 people make 2,000. Did you hear what Jeremy said yesterday? I knew, he said, if I put 250 people at the LA conference and they all left and got two family packs, I was gonna become a presidential millionaire. See how he thought? He knew 250 people, do the math, What's, what's the CV or the SV? 500, 250 times 1,000 is what? <clears throat> 250,000. See, you guys, you throw me off when you, type, when, you, <laughs> when you chat with me. You see how ADD I See, I gotta be willing not to be ADD. <laughs> I gotta take on that responsibility, okay? But see, you understand being directed, having a realistic plan, okay, and then being aggressive. Now, let me un make sure you understand what this means. This is not being aggressive with people. It's being aggressive and exercising your attributes. Being aggressive with your goals. It's not about attacking. Okay, but that's a very, very real attribute, guys. Being aggressive based on how fast or slow you want to go. And then being persistent and consistent. <clears throat> if I had to tell you Lisa's um, best attributes, being persistent and consistent. Okay, that's, that's, that's where she, right? Consistent every day. Persistent in pursuing our goals. Because sometimes we'll get, I'm in the mode. I'm in the mode. I'll make 100 calls. But then you don't make another 100 calls for two months. That's not consistent. I'd rather somebody have a plan of doing 20 calls a day consistently, right? And then having your days broken down based on what needs to be accomplished. Right? I've told you the story before. When customer service, Lisa said she was just spreading out customer service throughout the day versus just taking an hour a day because now you have your two hours of calls. It's all based on what you're willing to do, but being consistent in doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Same thing. A three-way call is a three-way call. When you start doing a couple, it's pretty much the same thing. You hear the same objections, you hear the same concerns. When you bring a new person in, it's the same objections, it's the same concerns. It's amazing. People really aren't that different. There is one thing I've learned in the people business, they're really not that different. They all want, okay, but the desire needs to be fanned. And this is a consistent, it's gotta be consistently fanned. That's why a good system of training keeps you moving forward. See, whatever number of people we have on, you know who I'm always trying to reach? One. 
If every day we got one person to, to, to continue the journey, we've done our job. I'm not trying to keep 44 people in. I'm trying to keep the ones that want to be in. And if it's one, I know what one good person can mean. One person that wants to exercise their attributes can mean from 50 to $50,000 a month to you. One person, one. Can you imagine if you had Jeremy Roma on your left, Rabu Gary on your right? Those are two people that are willing to exercise their attributes. So sometimes we try to get everybody. I'm not trying to get everybody. I want the people that want to take the journey. And when you're honest and transparent, this journey is not easy. This journey, if it was, everybody would be a leader. Well, that's where you get the face of leadership. Right? This is where people go, I'm a leader. Because you're constantly exercising your attributes. I've taken on this responsibility, but I have to work on it every day. How? Well, I've taken ownership of my business. That's why. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Right? If you call me and I don't get back to you, call 911. I'm willing to serve. I have to be persistent and consistent, but we still have to build our business, don't we? See, you're all things to all people. And that's when this thing gets fun. People say, oh, this is awful. Guys, you know what I, I think about my, you know what was awful? Working 12 to 14 hour days and making less and less money every year. Knowing I could never ever advance because I hit the top of my glass ceiling. Not being able to take vacations when I want to take them. Being told when to go to the bathroom, when to take my break, how much I was worth. That was awful. And I always remind myself if I'm having a bad day here. Because my worst day here is better than my best day in corporate America. My worst day here is better than my best day in corporate America. And I remind myself of that, right? It allows me, it allowed me to keep moving forward. Because, oh yeah, we have bad days. But I always go back. Compared to what? Guys, I appreciate all of you. I thank you. And I will see you tomorrow. Lisa's up tomorrow. You hear me, right, Lisa? Lisa's up tomorrow. She's got a great training schedule for everybody. So um, remember, today, 10 o'clock and 6 o'clock Pacific time, the um, Opportunity Webinar, and we will be doing them Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thank you guys very much. Talk to you all soon.